name is Tejas Malala and today I'll be speaking about the different parts of the violin in the context of Indian classical music. In order to be able to interact with the instrument in a satisfactory way, it is very important to know the names and the functions of the different elements which constitute a violin. Uh, structurally speaking, there is no difference between a violin that is used in an Indian setting or for Western classical music. The only thing that would change obviously is one, the style with which you're playing the instrument and secondly the tuning of the strings is different uh, in the Indian classical setting and I shall be speaking about that in future videos. Right at the top of the violin we have the scroll. In western classical music the scroll serves the purpose of decoration or ornamentation but in the case of Indian classical music since we play the instrument seated on the floor that scroll is that part of the violin that comes in contact with the leg and the other end of the violin rests on the shoulder. Right under the scroll we have four tuning pegs. The tuning peg is essentially a piece of wood to which we attach one end of the violin string. By turning the tuning peg we can either increase or decrease the tension on the string and thereby alter the pitch of that particular string. Next in line we have something called the nut. The nut is a piece of wood with uh, grooves inside of it. These grooves allow us to place the strings of the violin at a proper distance from each other and at a comfortable height. And next we have the all important four strings of the violin. The string is basically uh, a wire that is made out of metal or out of gut. The vibration of the string caused either by plucking or by using the bow is what gives the violin its characteristic sound. Next we have the fingerboard. The fingerboard is this black piece of wood upon which we can place our fingers and change the note that is being played uh, either while plucking or bowing the instrument. Next we have the bridge of the violin. The bridge is that piece of wood upon which the strings are suspended. Uh, the vibrations of the strings are, are sent into the body of the violin with the help of the bridge. The other function that the bridge serves is that it allows for a certain amount of separation between the string and the fingerboard. And now we come to the body of the instrument. The violin as you might know is a hollow instrument. When we cause the strings to vibrate, those vibrations are sent into the body uh, with the help of the bridge and something called the sound post. Uh, those vibrations or sound waves bounce back and forth in the body of the instrument and ultimately that sound comes out through these holes called the F-shaped holes. Most violins come with something called the chin rest which you would find at this portion of the instrument. In the case of Indian classical music I find the use of a chin rest unnecessary because we play the instrument while seated on the floor. If you were to play the western classical style where you rest the instrument between your uh, chin and your shoulder, perhaps that's a situation where the use of a chin rest would be required. And finally, we come to the bottom of the instrument where we find the tailpiece. The tailpiece is the other end to which the string is attached. The tailpiece often has uh, fine tuners on top of it. The fine tuners allow us to make minute adjustments to the tuning of the string. And now we come to the bow of the violin. The bow is basically a stick which is made out of wood and to this stick you have hair attached. This hair is usually made out of horse hair or sometimes you can find it being made out of synthetic materials as well. This hair is what comes in contact with the string causing it to vibrate and produces the sound of the violin. To one end of the bow you have this black piece known as the frog. The frog end of the bow is where the violinist holds the bow and where all the mechanics of the bow happen. To the top of the frog you have some black padding which is sometimes also known as the thumb grip. The thumb grip as the name suggests is where you place your thumb and to the top of the thumb grip we have some winding. This winding provides friction uh, for the forefinger such that you can hold the bow in a steady way. So that was a brief introduction to the different parts of the violin. If you have anything to say, please use the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.